A few years ago, I read a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the main takeaways from that book for me was time, time management. And I basically started to apply that to most areas of my life with some, some degree of success. First thing that we need to think about is rather than organizing our time, and obviously here we're, we're going to be talking um, in terms of practice schedule, guitar, but rather than organizing it day by day, we should think about it in terms of weeks. So finding a time of quiet, maybe Sunday evening, I like to do it on a Monday morning. For me, Monday, Monday is my Sunday. And then plan your whole week. And so we're going to try to do that guitar wise. So what I'm suggesting is instead of planning your practice schedule day by day, trying to get everything done every day, which never works. Let's try and do it week by week. So the first step, the first step would be to write down all the things that you could work on. And the beauty of this and should work on. The beauty of this is that you review it week by week. So if you find something that doesn't work next week, when you sit down and prepare your schedule for the week, you can always readjust it and add things that, that weren't there or remove things that didn't work. The idea is also that we don't want to be practicing everything every day, rather choose some days to practice a certain aspect and other days to practice another aspect. So the first thing we do is this. So you want to write down everything that you can practice. So we've got obviously technique, improvisation, scales, slash arpeggios. I've got solo guitar arranging I'm I'm composing let's let's put it in the same field I'm composing from a new album now so it goes in the same thing pump so let's say rhythm uh, transcribing Timing, I think timing goes here though. At least with the way I practice. The yeah, training, mix, this is a very good one. Listening. So, one thing is that as you practice some of the things, you learn how to save time by putting a few of these together. For example, technique and timing for me is the same because I do technique with a metronome. I do improvisation with a metronome as well. Uh, leaks and transcribing, perhaps you could put together. As you transcribe, you find a leak that you like and then start transposing it to different keys, try it on different songs different boxes. I could even put this together. So we are already saving time here. Now these obviously go into tiny subcategories. For example, as I practice my technique, it could be one exercise or the other. I usually choose one exercise a week. So as I do my schedule for the week, when it comes to technique, it could be minus six arpeggio, or it could be a Django, that Django diminished lick, or perhaps even one of the right hand technique exercises that I share with you guys in that category. By technique, I mean right hand technique, obviously. But we can play a particular scale or an arpeggio whilst practicing right hand technique, obviously. So we're, we're killing two birds with a stone. 
we are working on timing at the same time. So for me, usually this goes in the same part of my practice. So I think this is a, it's a pretty good list for now, I think. I think we could also add repertoire, learning songs. So for example, there's so, so many subcategories. Rhythm could mean many things. And as you plan your week, as you write down, down your rhythm, you can start writing down in brackets. I don't know, small chords, comping, or la pompe, or bolero, whatever you're working on. And then see, each week you can pick a different one, or, or stick to the one that you feel that you need to work on. So this, this gets quite intricate as you go, but at least it does have a system. <clears throat> it doesn't have a system yet. So we have our list. This is quite a rough list. So see, it's very subjective. It depends on where you're at, right? If you are just starting out, this is quite a big list, maybe. If you're very, very advanced, this is a small list, right? So it depends where you're, you know what you are practicing. And as I said, save some time every week whenever you've got an hour spare or half an hour even and it will it will take less and less time but book some time off to do this so as i was saying the problem is we try to do everything every day and then we never manage to and we feel stressed and especially for those of you who are like me who are who have a very high ocd when it comes to i don't have ocd per se but let's say I'm very anal about stuff, right? So if that was me deciding to do this every day, I would do this always first and that always second and this always the third because it's the way it has to be. So I would, for me, I would always do this and it has to be in the same order. And so I, I have to find a system to trick my brain to become more efficient because I'm not very flexible when it comes to habits. And so, what happens is I practice a bit and then something comes up and I have to stop and then I start from here again and then something comes up and then I enjoy this a bit too much then I spend a bit too, too much time here and then I don't get to do this and I feel annoyed and I feel quite nervous when I don't manage to practice so a much better way of doing things is why don't we try and get everything done but in a week not in a day. And you'll find it's funny how the brain works, but we're not computers. So we, we, we tend to think in a very rational way. So if I do everything every day, I will get better at, at everything every day. Truth is, that's not how it works. It's actually quite the opposite. Training to be flexible and jumping from one thing to the next. It's not jumping. It's not the right word, but, you know, training to be flexible and today I'm going to think about this tomorrow I'm going to think about that all the areas then help each other out this is what actually brought me to come up with a system in the makeover coaching right rather than focusing on everything all the time let's practice being flexible and let everything we that we learn in one area help us learn faster something else in another area all of these help each other out and I find working week by week has really changed my approach to practice and I feel a lot more, a lot happier about it. So uh, schedule time to plan your week. 20 minutes, half an hour before bed on Sunday or Sunday morning is a good time. And then we do before before planning our days, this is the order that really works for me. Order of practicing practice. This also depends on how much time you have in your day, how many hours you can practice. If it's one hour, I, the, the beauty about this is that even if you've got one hour a day, this works really well. Doing everything every day, you need at least three hours which is not efficient. So it's not necessarily how many hours you do, but how smart you are about practicing. 
So a, a good focused hour is much better than three hours of feeling stressed about trying to get everything done. Anyways, the way I like to do this is five minutes, five to 10 minutes of fun. I literally just grab my guitar and play whatever makes me happy. I usually put on a backing track of the latest song that I learned and just play on it without thinking about anything, just for fun. That reconnects me with the reason why I picked up the instrument in the first place, which was having fun with it. And somehow we managed to make it quite stressful for ourselves. So it reconnects with just the joy of playing music, which is very important. And it also re sort of rewired my brain and my brain knows now associates picking up the guitar with fun straight away, rather than I'm picking up the guitar and I've, I've got to practice skates for 40 minutes. Chances are you'll find an excuse to start doing something else. Whereas if this is always number one, at least for me, uh, it makes me want to play. And then I play for, for um, I just have some fun for a bit. And then you warm up and then you get motivated and then you're like, oh man, I should really start practicing my technique. And this is, this is actually B is technique. Which, and we are here. This is technique. So I change exercise every week. You will have that on a spreadsheet, perhaps a different exercise every, every week. Maybe it's a particular scale or a pledge that you're doing. Again, this is not a perfect system. There is not no system which is perfect. Systems are there to help you, not to restrain you. If whatever system you're using is stressing you out, then something is off because you created the system and now the system is stressing you out. It doesn't make sense. You create this to, to help you. If it doesn't work, change it. So this is a rough idea. And then, you know, change it if it doesn't work with you, for you, and refine it, put your own into it. But anyways, I do technique, I do seven minutes. I like seven because it's not 10, 10 is super long. Five is short. I like seven, it usually ends up becoming seven and a half. So technique seven minutes. I do it with a timer so that it beeps when the seven minutes are off. I told you I'm quite anal, this is for me. But at least if I've got a timer, I'm not, I'm not looking at the watch all the time. I just know when the time is off, it just beeps. So I can just really focus. And then 40 BPM. So let's say my exercise is this. This is one of the exercises that I've been working on uh, lately. Just a simple exercise, it can be anything. Um, and then I put a metronome on I've got it here, actually. I suggest you get a metronome like this, not on your phone. Otherwise, you'll open your phone, you get a message, and it's five minutes gone. And so 40 BPM allows me to work on technique, but also timing, also tone, and vibratos as well, which is part of technique, really. But I do seven minutes of this, literally, so it's a bit loud. See, I can focus, it's slow, so I can focus on my relaxation here as well. My tone, and I start working on my vibratos as well. change it 
so you don't get bored with it. You can come up with your own exercise. Actually, to, today I started working on playing a minor six arpeggio in groups of four notes. Right? That's the beauty of it. You change it up and you make it yours so it doesn't get uh, uh, boring. And this is actually a lick that gets me to work on my consecutive downstrokes. So it's good for technique, but it's actually a lick that it's, that's usually played in triplets. So you usually say And so that's why I practice this particular one in triplets. I'm also quite comfortable with it. I've played it enough times. By the way, I never practiced it fast ever, only 40 BPM. That allows you to speed up because you build up muscle memory later. But the other exercise I've been doing from today, the minor six arpeggio in groups of three, uh, groups of four notes, I'm doing it because I'm not very familiar with it. I'm doing two notes per click. Sorry. Super unfamiliar with it, you can do one note per click. When I teach uh, very beginners, I, I teach 40 BPM. That is, that's the way I was taught 40 BPM, one note per click. But obviously, you know, as we get a bit more comfortable with it, we don't want it to be super slow. So 40 BPM is, I think, as long as it triplets maximum i think it's good so that's that's my, the, the first portion of my practice then i do c and d and c and d i pick from here it could be whatever we are working on in the program for this particular week and then D, so that it doesn't, so that I know if you still have other things that you want to work on, obviously. For D, you could pick one of these things. So it could be a solo guitar. So it would be you trying to work out a solo arrangement of something. And you can schedule it in advance. So this is so simple. This is so simple that if you had one hour, it's plenty. If you have two hours, it's also plenty. What I recommend though is if you got two hours, try to make this one and a half hours. So leave a half an hour free to cover for if something comes up and you need to go and do something, open the door, or if you need to run to the bathroom. I don't know. You know, things come up. So leave a half an hour. Um, to play around with and if you still have that half an hour do more of this or more of this or more of this but never do i've got two hours so it's 30 30 30 30 because because it's not going to work most times and we need to we need to we want to keep it easy for, our, for ourselves and set ourselves up to win this is when we bring the joy back into this and this is what makes, a want, makes us want to play more, which means we practice more, which, me, we, which means we get better. It's counterintuitive because we come from a culture of work hard to get results, which actually most times is true, but not, it's not always and not necessarily. There are things that can come easy and should. Anyways, let's say this was your Monday. And then we've got Tuesday. You see where I'm going with this? Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And plan five days, not seven. I would plan five days. I plan five days always, not seven. I'll tell you why in a moment. But then see. So here on Tuesday, you put maybe these two. They could go together, I suppose. 
or maybe may, maybe you've got time for D and E. So now we did we did do a solo guitar. Then we've got arranging, composing. I'm gonna put this on. Yeah. Then you make sure you can fit all of these in 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 the week. So <clears throat> why only Monday to Friday, or it could be Wednesday to Sunday, depending on when you practice, because if Thursday your mate calls you and wants to go for a beer, then you don't have to feel stressed. This is assuming is assuming you guys are are as obsessed a, a, at this as I am. Hopefully not, but you know, if if I plan it and something comes up and then some someone call, especially for uh, leisure, and someone calls me, let's go for a drink, and then I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know, because I really want to go, but. I also want to practice. Or, you know, if I feel I've been more spontaneous that day and don't stick to a schedule, I know that I can move this to, okay, I don't have time for this today. Let's to move it to a Saturday then. So the idea is trying to fit everything in, but also have enough gaps to play with so that you can move things around and keep it flexible. And, you know, things come up anyways if, you know, Sometimes you, you, you're not able to do your Monday and your Monday is gone. That's it. <laughs> you know, nothing happens. Hopefully this will bring some clarity and back in your practice. You, know, you can't do everything every day. This is what I'm trying to say. There's too much to do. And like this, also sitting down every week and finding some time to sit down with it and go over your spreadsheet or whatever you're writing these things down also have to keep track of what you've done last week you know as it worked what what has worked should i practice more of this less of this i think tracking it like this is very good and writing things down really the bottom line is writing things down rather than sitting down and just noodle for a bit and then 20 minutes are gone so as I said, the other important thing is five days, plan five days, even if you've got time every day, or if you know you've got time four days a week, then plan three days. And then the fourth day, still play, it's a bonus, but at least you try and get everything down in three, three days, and then the fourth day is a bonus, should something happen. Of course, I recommend playing more than four days a week. Five is good. Six is good. I, I like not playing quite a lot. I like, I mean, I come from a place where I, where I was obsessed. And so I, I actually, I'm actually, I learned how to enjoy not playing quite a lot because then you just like it more when you go back to it. So I like days off way more than I used to. It's a bit like a girlfriend, no? You don't want to see her every day. Or let's say it's a bit sweeter when you miss each other. Now I like to change the exercise every month, every week. But should I come across an exercise that I really want to master and, and I see that it's very, very difficult and still very much outside of my reach, then I might stick to that for months. So again, the idea is that you can tailor this to your own needs and to your own analysis of your own playing and journey.